As Dr. Henry Okole explains, the integrity law refers to the formation of government in Section 63 and deals with two scenarios. One, in inviting the party with the highest number of candidates elected, and the other is in the event of a tie. The, what the, the acting register of political parties was referring to the other day was he was uh, actually uh, asking party, uh, the newly elected members, I should say, to stick with political parties in line with the list that his office had, and that's in line with the party resolutions. So in terms of, um, of uh, newly elected members sticking with political parties, uh, it's really in honor or to honor that uh, resolution that uh, the party has with, with its uh, candidates. And there are repercussions that uh, the registrar, active registrar, was referring to in particular with regard to this particular matter, and especially so before the formation of GAM, before the formation of GAM. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on the context, the integrity law is silent on political horse trading and the nature of horse trading, which involves candidates switching political parties. We don't have members of parliament who are members of political parties uh, moving in different kinds of directions in terms of switching uh, political parties because that would be uh, chaotic, it would be confusing. Uh, and so I think it is important that uh, as the political horse trading takes place in the lead up to form formation of government, uh, that the uh, provision of party resolution be invoked uh, and uh, enforced uh, so that members of parliament who are members of parties uh, would uh, vote uh, with some degree of uh, uniformity, uh, whether uh, they uh, switch camp, switch parties, or they stay together as a party uh, and uh, support the party that's been invited by the Governor General to put together a government. But independent candidates, on the other hand, have a bit more freedom to move under Section 69, but before the formation of government. Dr. Okole makes a distinction between voting as a party and voting as a coalition, especially when it comes to voting for a prime minister and a government. Like, let's say, for example, in 2007, the National Alliance came home with uh, 27 members, but other parties uh, supported the National Alliance to form the government back then. This time round, Peter, uh, Peter O'Neill's party is already on 20 plus the People's National Congress, uh, and they still will, will still need the support of other political parties uh, to reach the majority. And therefore, in that regard, on the floor of Parliament, what what really matters here is the support for Peter O'Neill will be tested on the floor of Parliament, because there's a second second recourse for that if he does not uh, achieve. Uh, the, the barest the majority to form the government. The two senior research fellows, through observation of how the elections were carried out this year, noted that there were deficiencies in the common role, in that there were a lot of names missing in nearly all of the electorates throughout Papua New Guinea, and that the organic law on the integrity of political parties now has a lot of gaps after the court case of July 2010. A review needs to be done to tie up loose ends. And the biggest challenge now is that of the formation of government, where a number of party leaders are vying for the prime minister's post. In the case of the 2007 formation of government, it was clear that the National Alliance Party, along with its coalition partners, would form government. Meredith Kusa, National MTV News.